What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you today. In this video we're going to be discussing Crystal Palace versus Chelsea, the team news, injuries, lineup and score predictions. But before we start this video, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and don't forget to press the bell notification button as well to be the first one to know whenever I release any new content. Now, it's Crystal Palace versus Chelsea and one of the positives about having fixtures come so thick and fast is that it allows for whenever there's a quick drop of form, there's an easy opportunity for you guys to build up that lost ground again in a couple days. And for Chelsea, a big example of that's been the last two games. After that terrible defensive calamity that was the West Ham game a couple days ago, on Saturday we looked like we turned the corner and we'd got back to winning ways against Watford. And what was a very convincing performance, we dominated throughout the 90 minutes. Um, our attack was shining as it usually has been. Pulisic was tearing that defence limb from limb. Mason Mount and Ross Barkley as well were running rings around the midfield. Olivier Giroud's link up was there for all to see. And the defence looked a lot more solid as well. Kurt Zuma was a welcome addition back into the side. His recovery tackles and his jumping ability for set pieces were so key to getting the, to getting the win against Watford. Um, even with Rhys James and other and other players who were coming back and hadn't really shown the same level of match fitness that they had shown in previous games, they looked a little bit more on the pace. Rhys James had a slow first start, but he started to come into the game a little bit more, and it looked a little bit more positive. But uh, the one worrying thing is consistency, and we have to be wor we have to be careful because we've got another bogey team that's coming around, and it's Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace always seem to have a knack of having a tough game against us they always seem to turn on the style especially whenever we go away to their ground we've had a couple of tricky visits down to Stella Sparks so I'm not that confident going into this game but I'm quietly optimistic about it uh, Chelsea have only kept one clean sheet on the road this entire season so for Chelsea they will be very relieved to see Crystal Palace's run of form leading up to this game as well because they haven't scored in any of their last three outings and only Norwich City apparently have, have been, uh, only Norwich City have conceded less goals in this Premier League season than Crystal Palace has so for our defense it should look a lot more straightforward and I would say it, on paper we should be able to beat these guys but I don't want to put it out there like that because this season has only just shown how inconsistent we can be. So it all depends on who's going to be in the lineup and it all depends on who decides to show up whenever, when we actually step onto the pitch because Crystal Palace still have their danger men. We know exactly what players like Ayu and Wilfred Zaha can do to us. So we need to try and be composed and we need to try and play... With the same style of play, I would say, I'd say the same style of play. I think Crystal Palace are also going to do something similar to what Watford and West Ham have done against us, where they sit deep and they try to stifle our attack in the final third and try to capitalise on any, any mistakes. So we need those moments of magic like we had in the Watford game. And we also need to be persistent and to not let the opposition's game plan get to our heads. Because if we start to get frustrated, then it's just, the game's only going to get longer and longer and it's only going to cause more and more mistakes that they could potentially capitalise. On. Now, moving on to team news, N'Golo Kante limped off against Watford and Frank Lampard said he has a low-level hamstring injury, so he isn't going to be playing in this game and he's going to be out of the Sheffield United game on Saturday as well. Mateo Kovacic and Fakayo Tomori are also out with Knox and for Crystal Palace they're going to be without James, James Tompkins and Jeffrey Schlupp, but former Chelsea boys uh, Gary Cahill and Patrick Van Arnholt should be starting. Now, uh, the, another thing to focus on is the games around us. Now, we're lucky that there's only one rival team that's playing on the same game, same day as us tomorrow, and that's Leicester City, and they're playing before us. So we're going to know what our fate is in terms of that game before we kick off. It's weird to say that we're going to be supporting Arsenal, but they got they knock points off another top four rival in Wolves, so they're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. If they can do something they haven't really done this season and be consistent, we greatly appreciate that. But Lampard said football has never been more on TV than it is now, and I expect them to buy into that, and they want to see what results are happening around us. So based off the sound of that, they are going to know what the result is going into the Crystal Palace Chelsea game because I know with some managers they don't like revealing rival results until the game's finished, so they could hope that the team can focus on their own job at hand instead of worrying about results around them but I feel like with Frank Lampard he's going to want his team to know exactly what to expect going into this Crystal Palace game so let's just hope Arsenal pull a shock out of them and actually get a win at Leicester I think that'll be their first win away no they're playing at home but I still think it'll be their first win against Leicester in over a year they've struggled against that team recently um 
Moving on to the lineup now, I think we're going to play the same uh, formation, the same 4 3 3 we've seen all seat, well, since the lockdown. Uh, Kepa's going to start in goal. Kepa, I think, against Watford didn't really have much to do. He had a decent save off, I think, a Danny Welbeck shot in the second half, but it was more or less just decent. Watford weren't really saying much in the attack, but I wouldn't want to see Caballero start anyway, so Kepa starts. Uh, in the defence, I want the same defence as the Watford game, but I'm going to list them out anyway. Restrict. Reese James at right back, who, like I said, had to come into the game a little bit more. But it's obvious that he's coming back to match fitness a lot slower than other players are. So you got to be a bit more patient with him. But he still came into the game a lot better than he was in the first half. He nearly got an assist as well for a Ruben Loftus cheek cross, but he didn't really connect with it the right way. So he looked promising. Reese James will keep at right back. As for Equator, I think we're going to need to keep him anyway just for the defensive solidity and the leadership that he gives to the back line. Uh, what was that game? Leicester City, you could tell the difference when it was night and day when we were playing with Aspel Equator and without Aspel Equator. Uh, without Aspel Equator. So his experience is going to be needed in the lineup anyway. Um, in the centre back roles, we're going to have Kurt Zuma, who had a very good performance coming back against Watford. Christensen as well turned back a new leaf. He had a brilliant game against Man City. Shocking game against West Ham, which was kind of overshadowed by Rudiger and Alonso's performances. But he started coming back more into himself. Now, I just want to see a bit more consistency coming from Andreas Christensen. But no reason to bench him just yet. Uh, with Kante not playing, I think Jorginho might actually get some game time, which is another talking point because he hasn't played a minute since lockdown, since we've come back from lockdown. And there's huge question marks over whether he's going to be here next season. Percy, I think if he's not playing in this game, he might as well book his tickets to Italy now because if he ain't playing this game and we ain't got N'Golo Kante, then he definitely isn't in Lampard's plan. So I think Jorginho is going to start this one. Mason Mount got substitutes against Villa in, um, against Villa against Watford instead of Ross Barkley. So I'm going to go with Mason Mount to start. And that's an obvious shoe in as well because he's been one of our players this season. So Mount starts. And I put Billy Gilmore next to him as well. Only because I feel like maybe Frank Lampard's going to want to rotate with the with the box to box centre mids, and I think because Ross Barkley played the full ninety, you might be more inclined to rest him in this game. So I think Billy Gilmore will start with Mateo Kovac and Kante out injured. Pulisic starts on left wing, and I really don't think I need to go into too much depth about this. If the Premier, if team of the season was based, no, if player of the season was based off after lockdown, he'd be a shoe in for player of the season because he's been brilliant every single game since we come back from lockdown. So Pulisic starts. Willian, I think we'll see start on the right as well, only because of his stamina, and you know this guy's going to be fit any game regardless. One thing you can't count out with Willian is his stamina, and he's always fit and ready for nearly every game. So I could see Willian starting this game as well. And up front, I think we're going to see Olivier Giroud play up front. I think Tammy Abraham's still struggling for confidence a little bit, and we're going to want some experience in the front line, so Olivier Giroud's going to start, and you know what he brings to the team, and you know he can bring around the players around him as well. So I'd be happy to see Olivier Giroud start. Score predictions, I think this is going to be a tricky one. Uh, to be honest, I think they're all going to be tricky in the running. I don't think there's going to be any easy games. But I, could, I don't see any reason why Chelsea couldn't get a result out of this game as well. I think it will be tight. Palace aren't going to make it easy for us. But I could see... 2-1 Chelsea, I, I hate saying 2-1s because it sounds like the baitest score prediction because it's so easy, both teams score and one team edges it, but I think it's going to be one of those games, so I'm going to go 2-1 Chelsea. Let me know your thoughts on my score prediction, my lineup, any thoughts down in the comment section below. Player ratings will be out on this channel after the Crystal Palace Chelsea game once I've got all the Blues fan TV stuff done as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G, and if you guys want to see me do more previews, let me know down in the comment section below. Take care and up the chills.